I'm RJ Vijaya back with another spectacular edition of Neurodiversity with Dr. Banerjee brought to you by Landmark College, the college for students who learn differently. Wald Wasserman aptly said, there are no learning disabilities. There is only uniqueness. And uniqueness is what Landmark College strives to encourage and support, providing learning environments for neurodiverse students so they can thrive. And guiding us through the series is Landmark College Learning Disabilities and Neurodiversity Ambassador at Large, Dr. Manju Banerjee. And she's here with me now. Welcome, Dr. Banerjee. It's wonderful to be here with you. Look forward to our session. Yes, absolutely. Me too. And Dr. Banerjee, today we're going to delve into how to cultivate good study skills for neurodiverse uh, students. So how can parents best help their students with studying? Yeah, yeah. Great question, because it can become a contentious issue or it can become an issue that people just don't want to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think the key takeaway is that parents should be homework facilitators, not homework doers. Okay, That's really important because our instinct as parents is to jump in and kind of do the homework. Yes, yeah, and very I true. Will, mm -hmm. I will admit my share of, uh, you know, jumping in and doing a diorama or some sort of other art project. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but it's really important that the kids do the homework because if they don't, they will not feel responsible for it. So uh, if, if we already have created a habit where the student kind of feels, oh, my mom's going to help me out or my dad's going to help me out, uh, you need to start chipping away at that dependency. So develop so, that kind of uh, independence uh, and, uh, you know, self-reliance. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So let me give you some tips of how yeah. parents can become homework facilitators. Um, one of the things which is so important and for us in our work is to know where to go for information that we don't have or if you're confused about something. So as long as your student, your teenager or preteen knows, I can go to this source, I can go to this peer, Mm -hmm. I can post a question on my homework chat. Whatever it is, as long as they have resource, yeah. they know where to go, then you feel in control. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's a very helpless feeling and for us too. So it's really important that parents kind of talk to their students about, okay, what are your resources? What are your support systems? Who can you go to ask for help? Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing I would recommend is... Mm -hmm make study time a habit by example. Uh, you know, I know I have friends in the Indian community who will leave in the evening for a party and say, now remember to finish your homework before you go to bed. Mm. <laughs> it is yeah. very difficult for the teenager. What they will probably do is get on their phone or get on their, uh, you yes. know, device digital device and be talking to friends so they're going to mirror what you do right so yes yeah. mm -hmm. yes exactly so it's really important as facilitators of study but then the parents might come back with oh don't i then don't i need to party too <laughs> <laughs> yes it's, it's, you have to find that balance yeah you have to find that balance mm -hmm. that is the that is the important thing i mean you know Yes, of course. And sometimes parents do need to go out and yes. do, do their thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, maybe, uh, at least initially, maybe uh, you want to do less of that. And as your student develops more independent skills, you might feel comfortable saying, okay, we're going out. Mm -hmm. You're on your own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the other big thing with study and homework uh, at home, this is at home, not, not school environment, is being able to accurately estimate how much time will be needed for a particular homework assignment, mm -hmm. studying for a test, and so on. Many of our neurodiverse students are very poor at estimating how mm -hmm. much time is needed. So encourage your son or daughter to have that conversation yeah. with you and say, okay, you really think you can finish that writing assignment in, in uh, four hours or two hours? 
um, and then show them and talk to them about how to break down a task mm -hmm. so that it feels manageable. It doesn't feel overwhelming. And if you're not, if you don't feel as a parent comfortable doing that, you can always reach out to the teacher. Yeah. So one thing I'll tell you at Landmark College in mm -hmm. some of our um, online dual enrollment courses, the syllabus would actually include not only the schedule for when the assignment was due, but also a schedule for studying for that assignment. Okay. And by, yeah, uh -huh. by studying, I mean, when should you start reading? When should you start collecting material? When should you write your first draft, whatever? And there are apps for this as well. You don't have to uh, just be looking for mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. so, so think about it. Think about ways you can... Um, facilitate uh, the the studying process at home without mm. doing the homework yourself. Okay. So those are very constructive tips right there. And uh, folks, if you are just joining us, you're listening to Neurodiversity with Dr. Banerjee, brought to you by Landmark College, the college that offers personalized assistance not found at most traditional degree programs uh, for uh, students and professional training for the educators as well. For more information, you want to visit landmark.edu. And guess what? Landmark has established a success center right here in the West Coast in San Mateo, California, that provides neurodiverse teens, young adults, and adults with access to unmatched resources and support for success in their academic and social skills. And uh, that it's an incredible resource right here in the Bay Area, which is really uh, mirroring the flagship campus in Vermont. So you want to check it out uh, for for your needs as well. And today we're talking to our subject matter expert, Landmark College uh, uh, Learning Disabilities Ambassador at Large, Dr. Banerjee, who really walks us through um, how to understand neurodiversity in all its uh, facets. And we're talking about inculcating the study skills and how parents can really help uh, students with uh, with studying as well. Uh, so Dr. Uh, Banerjee, you know, you spoke about really very, very uh, key um, suggestions right there, but are there any learning tools and technologies that you can recommend to help students with their learning? Yeah, yeah, that's a, again, a great question. And it's a very broad question. Mm -hmm. because it depends on so many factors. Yes, I would think it's broad because we just spoke at the last uh, session about executive function challenges as well, right? And, you know, c considering all of those uh, those different components and things like that. So it is vast to consider. It, it is vast. And, and, and as you know, with technology, mm -hmm. uh, like you focus on it today and it's already obsolete tomorrow. Very so true. technology changes very fast. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things I would recommend is don't go after the shining tool. Mm. Don't, don't necessarily focus on the latest, the best, or even the most expensive. Mm -hmm. there, there, there are some core technologies which are helpful for students who learn differently. Um, the key is you want the student to be using whatever technology they're using in all their different study environments. What do I mean by that? Use that software or app mm -hmm. or hardware at home. Also use it at school. Use it if you need to and if you're able to in a, in a, in a group study group setting, mm -hmm. in a library setting, and so on, so that you become familiar and facile with that particular technology. That's really important. Mm -hmm. So there are four kind of dimensions, if you will, okay. where, where technology is always helpful. And I'll talk more about why is it helpful. Mm -hmm. But the four areas are one, if it can help you with your reading demands as you go through uh, from middle school to uh, high school to college, your reading demands will increase. Mm -hmm. And if it's something that can help you with your reading, that is very beneficial, number one. Number two is a software that helps you organize. Okay. Think of, and in my days, we used to talk about a backpack. Now, think of a digital backpack. Mm -hmm. And what should a digital backpack have? Uh, you can a have digital a digital backpack. backpack. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. You could have a Chromebook, 
Uh, you could have, I mean, most college students and even middle schoolers now have uh, a cell phone. And it's not just a phone. It has many, many functions and features. Mm -hmm. so, so the software that helps you organize your information. So you have easy access, saving it on the cloud. Most colleges now do that. So you can access it in the library, in your study group, and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. The third uh, technology is that whatever helps you with time management. And there are many, many, I mean, there are just so many devices that are out there with time management, um, you know, and different techniques that will allow you to do that. You mm -hmm. can have a wristwatch, which kind of uh, helps allocate time uh, and um, other software that can be built into your laptop. Yeah. The fourth area is around note-taking. Mm -hmm. Figure out how you're going to take note. Are you going to dictate? Is it going to be a dragon dictate, which many neurodiverse students use as a software? Um, is it a whatever speech-to-text software mm -hmm. yeah. you are using? Or if you're not using note-taking in through speech-to-text, how are you organizing your notes? What kind of notes are you taking? But, um, you know, whether they are uh, the, the lecture notes from your teachers in, in your classes or from your faculty, PowerPoint slide decks, et cetera. Those are all part of that broader umbrella term of note taking, uh -huh. keeping note, archiving or keeping note off. So think about those areas. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to add something more, but after you have a question for me. Because you question. Will, <laughs> Yeah, yes. no, I look like I was trying to remember all of those. So one was to do with reading. One was the digital backpack, which consists of what? Organizing tools, organizing, organizing apps. Yeah, right. yeah. And one was note taking and then. Time uh, management. Sorry? Time management. Time management. Yes, four yeah, critical yeah. ones. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, the issue is with technology. Think yes. of technology as a way to outsource mm -hmm. your cognitive load. Because we hold so much information in our brains. Right. And especially for neurodiverse students, when the executive function is still developing, yeah. your memory ca capacity, work term, uh, short term memory is, is not as fully developed. Your cognitive flexibility, not as fully developed. So if you can find technology where you can outsource mm -hmm. the cognitive load, okay. that really helps. Wow. That, that makes a huge difference. That's uh, amazing. You mm -hmm. know, in the literature, we talk about intrinsic load and extrinsic load. Mm -hmm. So intrinsic load is the load that is internal to the task. That is the level of difficulty of the task. Mm -hmm. To give you a very simple example, two plus four has a lower intrinsic load than 275 divided by 340. Mm, okay, so inherent in the in the yeah. problem. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. How how can we reduce that load? Yeah. That intrinsic load is by looking at the smaller tasks mm. that build up to that big task wow. and becoming automatic with mm. the smaller task. Example, mm. reading comprehension. You have to first learn how to decode each word. Yeah. And that sound symbol association. That's a mm -hmm. lesser task to build up to that bigger task. So that lesser task of decoding and a letter word identification, as it's called in the assessment literature, mm -hmm. can be done by audiobooks. So you can focus on what the words are saying instead of trying to decode and sound out the ah, word. Okay. So right. it is mm -hmm. reducing the extrinsic load, uh, yeah. uh, the intrinsic load. Mm -hmm. now, the, we also want to reduce the uh, extrinsic load. And extrinsic load is the load that happens because of external circumstances. So for example, um, if you have a test and the test is presented on paper in a very busy format, mm -hmm. then you're trying to figure out, you're trying to process the words on the on the exam, if it's a word problem, let's say, instead of uh, really trying to focus on what the problem is asking yes. you to solve. Mm -hmm. Presentation is an example of uh, yeah. extrinsic load. 
Another example of extrinsic load is location. Where are you sitting to take that test? Mm. If you're in a very busy place, then that, uh, that's going to be a distraction. Wow. What's the technology? Headphones. Mm -hmm. Use noise-canceling headphones. Mm -hmm. So once you, once you fill up your digital backpack, then you can think of accessorizing it. Mm. And accessorizing it is through uh, maybe noise, noise canceling headphones, maybe something that allows you uh, text to speech software, speech to text software, uh, maybe a way to archive information, take pictures of the uh, whiteboard and yeah. store it and on and on. Wow, this is such great information and insight, really. I hadn't really thought of it like you, how you've mm -hmm. described it all. And it, it has so much meaning for anybody, you know, not just neurodiverse students. So thank you for bringing that to us. And folks, you are listening to Neurodiversity with our subject matter expert, Dr. Banerjee. And we're trying to understand and learn uh, your study skills at home for neurodiverse uh, students, how you as a parent can uh, assist and help and, uh, you know, work with your children towards uh, successful uh, uh, homework and things like that. So uh, this is, of course, brought to you by Landmark College that is combining research-based learning strategies and academic support to prepare students for the rigors of college-level work. And Landmark is based in Vermont with a terrific success center right here in the Bay Area, in San Mateo, and you want to find out more about it, visit landmark.edu slash success center, or just call them at 408-505-4170. So Dr. Banerjee, um, you know, lots to uh, sort of uh, process there, but do you have any suggestions for parents and, uh, you know, homework battles with teenagers? Because that can get... Uh, very adversarial, right? So <laughs> what, yes. what would you suggest there? Yes, yes. I'm going to start with the um, cultural dimension. Yeah. And as we know, in the Southeast Asian community, uh, uh, academics mm. uh, is on a pedestal. It's a very high premium. Yes, priority, many, prioritized at, at all levels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And for yeah. many parents, uh, the way you do well is by doing well in homework, doing well on tests. And if you're not getting an A plus on every course, then th there's a potential for battle brewing. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, but I want to start by saying the teenage population uh, is so rewarding. It can be at, as challenging as well as rewarding. That is mm -hmm. the population that I work with or used to work with. Uh, so it is the young adult, the college population, the teenage, the high schooler. Mm -hmm. and, and why is it so rewarding? It is, it, is, it is a time of discovery. It is a time of these students becoming, trying to assert their independence. Mm -hmm. And different students assert their different independence in different ways. So it's really important to understand as parents that they are going to want to control how much time they spend on homework, where they do their homework, how they do their homework, mm -hmm. so on. Yeah. So, so uh, you know, this has been a discussion around the teapot mm -hmm. on many occasions uh -huh. uh, in the Indian community. Yes. And you do. Uh, but I think it's, it's there are two things. One thing I want to say is it is a time of learning for, uh, for parents as a mm -hmm. parent as mm -hmm. well. There's going to be a shift. Yeah, have to say that to yourself. And once puberty hits, there is a shift. How are you going to balance and pick your battles? And what are you going to do in terms of avoiding a war? Mm -hmm. Battles, avoiding a war. war. So pick, pick, pick your battles. I mean, by, you know, if the student is somewhat messy in their room, mm. they don't see that as a priority. But for you, it is. Yeah. Can you can you be flexible, somewhat flexible around that? Mm -hmm. So focus not so much on the uh, process, but the outcome. Uh -huh. If the outcome is, a, you know, they're doing well, the teacher gives you a good report on a PTA conference meeting, then follow that up with praise. Mm -hmm. And just as I mentioned, I think in my first session is more time studying, if you're studying ineffectively, is not going to help. Hmm. 
So as parents, we really need to learn how to kind of back off during the teenage years. It is a time when peer group and peer acceptance becomes very important. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know many parents uh, yeah. who, who tell their teenagers, well, I don't want you mixing with so-and-so or kind of fraternizing too much with this yes. particular student because he's not a good student. He's not a good influence on you. <laughs> he not, you, got the, you, you got it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <Yeah. laughs> so those are like waving a red flag to a wolf. Because that is the age when the kid wants to say, well, I know who my friends are. I want to be able to choose my friends. Yes. Friend. Mm -hmm. so, Asserting so, their independence that yeah. way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So choose your language. Choose your phrases. Choose the time when you want to talk to them. Uh, find ways to praise, uh, even if there are small little um, improvements. And one of the things I found to be very effective when I was working with teenagers is to say, can we pilot this idea for a week? This idea mm -hmm. of piloting something. Say, you know, follow my schedule. I remember my first student that I worked with in college, I was at a different college, um, very ADHD. And he said, I never keep calendars. Those things just don't work for me. Oh. And I said, that's fine. How about I keep your due dates mm. and schedules and I will keep a shadow calendar because I can't work without one. Mm. I need to know yeah. because I'm working with him as his student. Gosh, just the thought of that gets me. <laughs> <laughs> and you won't believe it. It was literally three weeks into the semester. Mm. And he came to me and he said, Dr. Banerjee, can I buy that calendar from you? Oh. Because I can't, I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm messing up. Mm-hmm. So again, you know, thinking of creative ways to to show them that you're on their side and choosing your words, choosing the timing, choosing what you're saying is really important. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the thing is, and I think that's important for parents to feel good about, yeah. you have known your son or daughter for 12 years, just before teen, teenage. Mm -hmm. And you know them, you know their personality, their strengths, their areas of challenge. So consider that information as an asset. And how can you then leverage that information mm -hmm. to help them succeed in whichever academic endeavor they're in? Mm -hmm. so, so, and how do you leverage that? Start by giving up control. Mm -hmm. Little by little, little by little, but yeah. start by giving up control. Mm -hmm. um, consequences sometimes work and sometimes they don't. Yes. Uh, this is true for neurodiverse individuals as it is for everybody. Right. Everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so wonderful suggestions so right there. Are, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Okay, so thank you, Dr. Banerjee. No, I'm just going to say my last, last point. Yeah. Yes. So, so my last thought was to anticipate where you might have. Anticipate that. Please, go mm -hmm. ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead. You were saying anticipate yes. what, what you're going to come up anticipate, with. Anticipate, anticipate, yeah. And, oh, anticipate where there might be battles, if you will. And then find ways to diffuse it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that works for for across the board. <laughs> yes. yes, yes, absolutely. Well, another really wonderful session, Dr. Banerjee. Thank you so much. Very constructive, uh, very creative suggestions uh, and, and life lessons really along the way. So thank you so much. Much appreciated. And of course, we're looking forward to continued conversations as well. Uh, so folks, that's Dr. Banerjee of uh, Landmark College life-changing programs to teach students who learn, think, and operate differently. Uh, that's Landmark College and find out how they equip students to develop skills and strategies that they need to succeed in life. Visit landmark.edu and check out their success center in San Mateo. For that, visit landmark.edu slash success center or call 408-505-4170. 
and of course uh, you know make make sure that you join us every thursday 3:30 to uh, 4 pm for another enlightening session of neurodiversity with dr banerji uh, brought to you by landmark college if you have questions on any aspect of neurodiversity for dr banerji send them my way at vijaya at radiozindagi.com that's v i j a y a at radiozindagi.com and until we meet again next time for now i'm rj vijaya keep listening to radio zindagi jiya ja <laughs>